This is Pearl's brand new 72. It really is brand new. This is the first time that this boat has been seen. It's its debut here at the Port Lauderdale International Boat Show and it's been worth the wait because it is a fantastic looking machine with a really cunning interior. They've got so much into this boat, it's incredible. Some really nice ideas, but I think we start on the outside with the way that it looks because I think that's a great looking boat. I love the way that this line sort of sweeps up and then joins into the trailing edge of the flybridge. That looks really great. Okay, we're going to head on back give you guys the full tour. There's a lot to take in on this one, so it's well worth staying with me and seeing what we've got to show you. And it starts right back here. There's some really interesting ideas. For example, these drop sections that come down either side of the hull, what these do is extend the bathing platform all the way around. But where it gets really clever is back here, because what we've got, drop platform, you would expect. What you might not expect is the garage and the seating that's on the back. So this seat here drops and swivels over and then this whole panel lifts up to reveal the garage. So this is the really unique thing about this yacht because, well, firstly, it's incredibly rare to find a 70-foot flybridge boat with a garage. Um, and this will actually take a Williams 345 tender in here, so it's take a decent size. What you don't expect then is to be able to put a jet ski in here as well. That is absolutely remarkable. Now what you do with these is the, uh, the bathing platform lowers and then of course you can slide these down into the water. Uh, technically I suppose you could put something on the platform as well, another jet ski if you wanted to, but the whole idea of course is to put this whole, all the toys away really, so you know, jet ski, tender, but also things like the sea bob as well uh, can live in here. Those are the remote controls for uh, the winches that pull these in and out. Um, and yeah, that is quite a remarkable feature. If we have a look around here, these these drop sections I was talking about, and it just means that it just extends this whole beach club area around and along the side of the boat. So that works really well. If we head on board, the innovation keeps on coming. This is quite neat, these tables here they both telescopic and they both expand so you've got a lot of flexibility here you can bring these out there are sections to support these that come out underneath like this and the idea is you can have that the full width right the way across fold it up like this to make it easy to get in and out you can even drop them down extend the cushions and have that as extra sunbathing this area here you can have the bar area you can put a fridge underneath if you want to or just have that as a bit of storage but let's head on inside because this is where it gets really interesting there's a power door, again, not what you expect on a Circa 70-foot boat. And this is the interior. Now, these are Kelly Hoppin designed interiors. And there are three... Wait for that to shut. There are three basic versions that you can have. You can have the modern, which is very light. You can have a luxury, which is sort of a, a mid tone and you can have this one which is called indulgence this is actually brand new so the whole color scheme the woodwork the way that it's finished the various finishes around the place the color scheme of the upholstery all of that is part of that specification but as i say it is owner spec depending on what you want some nice details like the lighting they've put up in around here you can see it all down underneath everywhere so everything appears to float we've got tv fitted in over here there's tons of storage all these sorts of areas down here for example a storage all the way along the galley, rather than being aft, is in the centre. It is quite a different boat in lots of respects. Some very nice detailing in here, like the bins that come out like this, like the crockery that's fitted in like this. You see the plates back there and so forth. There's a dishwasher in here as well, of course. That's just there. And then you've got the cooking over here. But what is nice is they've incorporated into this a bar area, so you can see how you've got the bar stools down this side, lovely place to sit in the evening and have a chat and a drink. And I mentioned those cutaway um, bulwarks, you can see the benefit of them here because they drop right down. So these windows that drop right under floor level give you an amazing view out across the water. Now the layout of this, again, pretty unique. It is uh, four cabin and uh, all of them en suite, which first of all was unusual in a Circa 70 foot flybridge boat, but also two master cabins, and I'll explain that when we get a bit further in and look at the lower deck, but we'll head on forward first of all. So you've got a dining area just here, fridges are over here as well actually, in case you're wondering where they were. They, there we go, live in here, fridge and obviously freezer underneath. Also 
I really have used every area because you've got these things that slide out, for example, for a bit more storage. Dining area is here. This is very much a pearl sort of thing where they've extended the glass up so you can slide these blinds back and get an absolute ton of light in here if you want to. The lower helm is here. There's a side access door on this one. Again, not something you always find on this side of the boat. Just, there we go, straighten that little fella. Um, obviously the helm position is here. It's the MTU engines on these. We'll have a look at those in a moment. Throttle controls, bow and stern, thruster, and obviously this is all configurable across here for navigation and so forth. Engine instrumentation is across here. So again, some really nice finishes. Look at the way they've done this across here. Very nice. And then the big windscreens. So we're going to head forward, first of all, I'm going to show you one of the master cabins. And that sounds a bit odd, but it will make more sense as we go around. So we'll come down here. There's a very nice lobby area when you come down to the bottom like this. And then we come on around. There's a door here. You can see it's open at the minute, but that closes off across that threshold. First thing we find then is this area, which is wardrobes across here. storage just here. There's a lot of storage in here actually. I wouldn't open it all but you can see it all the way around here. But let's take a step back for a minute because look at that. Isn't that a lovely cabin? I think that is spectacular. Very, very nicely done. Love these little seating areas around this table. I like the fact that they put the whole windows in but also these windows up here. Of course there are blinds to come across those. Um, but it just gets a load more natural light into here. It just makes it feel bigger more spacious but you know it doesn't need to feel spacious because it actually is spacious look at that that's fantastic let's come on round again with all the subtle lighting down underneath here down underneath here if we come right on round this side then we've got a bit more storage in places like this and we've got the uh, the heads here the ensuite Rainfall shower in there. Again, I love the way I've done the materials in here. It all looks beautiful. And a little wave in the mirror there. Let's reverse out of here and take another look at that, because that is worth seeing, and we'll press on. So that is an individual cabin with an individual access, but what we can do now is come back out through here back up to the main deck, like the way they put this handrail, but it's recessed into here. It's also almost invisible, but it's there to use. And then we'll find another access here down to the lower deck. And another lobby area. And where we can go from here is back. This is what I mean about it having two owner's cabins, because that is what you'd normally expect to find on a boat of this size as an owner's cabin. And yet you've got this one and you've got that one that we saw up in the bow. And that's brilliant for charters. So if you've got two couples chartering a boat, for example, if you've got uh, co-owners. Uh, also, for families, you imagine if you've got um, adults with kids and then grandparents have come along, they can have their own separate full-sized accommodation up at the front of the boat. And then this for the sort of the adults and the kids down in this level. It works really well. It's very clever. There's TV built in behind that mirror so it shines through the mirror. You've got a lovely dressing area over on this side. But yeah, that works well, doesn't it? Let's go and have a look over here because this is the ensuite to this cabin. Again, a lovely size and again, big separate rainfall shower. <laughs> I've just pressed the light switch with my shoulder. There we go. I'll edit that out later. You know the drill. That's a great cabin. Again, with the beautiful lighting. Done a nice job with that. If we head back into this passageway then, there's two more cabins here, and that one down the end is the day heads. So we'll look in this one next. And that really is sort of VIP cabin standard, isn't it? Very, very nice. Again, TV in behind here. You've got wardrobe over here and a very nice ensuite tucked away there. And then we'll come around a little bit further. And <laughs> we find another cabin 
in here, two singles. They're all great sized cabins, aren't they? You would expect four cabins and four en suites that something would be compromised, but somehow it just isn't. Full standing headroom. Look at the headroom in here. I'm six foot two and I really have to reach up for that. That's fantastic. Now the ensuite is in here, like so. And you can see we've got the shower in here as well, in behind there. But actually there's another door. There's that one there and that is from the passageway so that it can be used as a day heads without anybody having to go through someone's cabin to use it. So that's in there like so. Superb. <laughs> Love this on the wall as well. I don't know how well you can see that. Less work, more play. You can obviously switch that on or off. Did I show you wardrobes in here? I don't think I did, and that's because they're actually hidden in behind. There we go. Hanging locker there. Safe is in there as well. But there is storage underneath all the beds. There's storage in around over here. Storage in drawers down here. There's a load of storage in here. Okay, let's press on a bit further. Back up these steps. I think we pretty much covered the interior. And we're going to head on out. That is a very nice saloon area. This boat is, if I remember rightly, 5.7 metres wide. And I think that's where they get a lot of the space from. But it does feel a very, very spacious boat. Okay, so we've got decks to look at. See, this is what I talk about the detailing. Look at the way they've done this in here. Beautiful. Let's give that one a prod. And we'll head on around the outside. So, what's first? Let's do the flybridge next. That's up here. There is a docking station underneath here. So that's uh, bow and stern thruster and um, engine controls. And then if we head on up, a very nice size flybridge. And another thing I've not seen a boat of this size, you can swap that sunbed for a hot tub if you prefer. Love these seats at the back, great place to sit and uh, take a drink of an evening. This sunshade powers out, of course, from the back end of the, um, of the hardtop. There is a wet bar up here, that's over here, so this is the usual sort of thing. You've got the barbecue underneath there, that's a sink under that one. Fridge in there. Dining area is over here, again with the detailing, the stainless steel leg on this, that's really smart. And this is rather neat because this has got louvres on it. I would show you but it's powered off for the moment unfortunately because stop people playing it at the boat show. But you can see these sections down here. What they do is they tilt so you can have it them all sort of like that, sort of raised up and let a bit of air through. But you can also then, once they're tilted up, power all of them Constantine are back to have it open, which is again something I've not seen before. I've seen them tilting, I've not seen them tilting and then opening. Nice seating area next to the helm here. You can drop this table down again, it's on a height adjustable leg. You can put cushions on that, make that into a sunbathing area next to the helm, and the helm is over here. So, helm seats, and of course, your multifunction displays, autopilot, all that kind of stuff is all just here, and a great view out over the bow of Fort Lauderdale. Fantastic. Let's press on. We'll take a walk around the outside and then we've got crew cabin and engine room to show you. So we will head around this way first of all. So decently wide side decks. And if we have a stroll up here. This is the side access door that's next to the helm station. And this is the foredeck area. So what you've got here, well, first of all, there's big storage bins underneath here for warps and canopies and other bits and pieces you might want to put in there. And then you have this seating area, as you can see across here, and you have the sunbeds here. There's a table that will lift up and fold out, so a great dining spot, or you can drop it down, obviously, to increase the sunbathing size if you want it. If you come right up around here, now you can see here, these are these windows that we saw in that forward owner's cabin. Here and here and then round on the other side, that's what gets all that natural light into there. Anchor handling kit is up here, um, anchor chain lockers, more deck gear, that kind of stuff is all kept up here. And then the anchor goes down through the stem and appears out, so it's quite a sort of flush fit effectively. 
let's move on around this side. We've got the carbon poles here and the uh, awning up on top again. That's something you can remove if you don't want it, but nice thing to have. I like the fact, it's all in the details, but look at these rails. They are oval, not round. So again, it's that kind of super yacht feel. And this boat, to me, feels about as super yacht as you can get for around 70 foot. It is quite remarkable. Let's come back down here and we'll find one more super yacht feature, which is this side door. You see this a lot on super yachts, less so on smaller boats. So this opens here. Like that. And this then takes us on down. To the crew area. Now I'll ask you to remember again that we are on a just over 70 foot boat because again it's quite surprising what they've got in here. You've got um, two bunk beds in here. This would actually make a brilliant overflow cabin for teenagers or for extra guests. It is all to uh, guest cabin standard. Look at the woodwork and the lighting and everything else they've got in here. Wardrobe in there. But you've also got things like uh, washing machine in here and there is a fridge in here there's even a little microwave tucked away up there and then a bit more storage next to it and then the heads for this cabin is here and again with a separate shower like so it is Nicely done, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> just pitched the fan on with my shoulder. Right, let's come out of here. Last thing to talk about, engines, and they are in here. Now you can see here the tender garage, um, the base of it going down in between the engines. You see that's how they managed to use this area twice. That and the fact that they have these engines on V drives. So they are shaft drive engines, but the shafts come out forward and then go back underneath. So it allows the engines to fit really well back in the boat. That's partly how they've got so much storage into it. So it's some rather clever packaging. Uh, these are a pair of MTU 10V 2000s. They are 1,622 horsepower each and they're giving the boat about 33 knots. So cruising therefore typically 20 to 25 sort of thing you do with this sort of boat. And that's going to give you about probably a bit over 200 miles at 23 knots. But as ever, drop the speed back, push the range up. So 12 knots, you'll double that pretty much. And you will get sort of, you know, over 400 miles out of it at that sort of speed. We've got the Sea Keeper. You can probably see it there at the back. Let's go right back under. There we go. Quite a nice engineering space back here, actually. Uh, air conditioning over there. Battery banks are over on that side. And then we can see this end of the engine. One of the engines is just there. And the other one is, of course, on the other side. There we go. OK. Let's back, back out of here. You can actually see that V-drive configura configuration under here, because that's where the shaft goes out, just down underneath there. Other things we've got in here. Generator lives in here. And that is over there. And then finally, there's a ladder here, and that will take you directly up back into the cockpit. So that's another way out of this area. That little fellow there is a camera. So you can keep an eye on this area when you are underway. Brilliant. That, I think, is about the size of that. OK. Now, I've got to ask what's underneath here, haven't I? Let's have a look. Ah, big storage area. Excellent. Right. Let's come back out of here. And we will head forward again, I think. Let's just close that one back up for a moment. Okay, thank you. Right up to the bow. Right to the very bow. Here we go. And that is about the size of that, the brand new Pearl 72. I think that is an absolutely fascinating boat. It's one of those boats where you really do wonder how they got it all in. Quite remarkable. 
as ever let me know what you think of that one as ever many thanks for watching and as ever huge thanks to pearl for organizing that tour and emptying the boat in the middle of a busy boat show to let us do the full tour properly we'll catch you on another one of these real soon take care bye bye